Hey heroes, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. I was going to start another Wild Wilder Myth series, but actually I saw a tweet from the developers that they're going to uh, actually get it out of early access on June 15th, and they're going to have a new campaign. So I'm going to wait till June 15th until we have our new series. So for now, uh, this week we'll have a new Trial of Fire series. Uh, let's take a look. We're going to do... Uh, let's see. We're going to do the Water Gem uh, mission or quest. We're going to change the difficulty to medium. The difficulty level, it, like, it doesn't really tell you what's the difference between the two, but I feel like there's a big difference. Uh, and uh, I might be kind of good at this game, but I'm not perfect. So we'll, we'll see how well I do. So let's take a look. Uh, I can't remember what party I used last time. Uh, let's see. Mm. So I'm going to keep the Elementalist. And the special thing about the Elementalist is the first card you play each turn costs minus one willpower. Uh, let's see. Why don't we use the Spirit Speaker? The first card you play each turn has the following effects, plus one defense, summoner. So he's kind of, this guy's kind of like a jack of all trades and we, we can mold him to, to, to whatever we want. Um, so maybe we can make a summoning team, not too sure. And the last character, let's see, we kind of need like a, a melee person. Maybe the assassin? First time you play an attack card each turn, draw a card. So maybe this guy. Okay. So let's take a look at the items. As usual, we'll pick our items. Let's see. I'm going to actually change the name of this guy. Excuse me. Kayrid Kinson Preya. Okay. So Preya, let's see. She has what? The Call Lightning Staff. I think that's good. Uh, call Lightning. Yeah. So we're going to go with the Call Lightning Staff. And the Spirit Speaker... Let's see, Spirit Speaker could have a powerful, let's see, I think I'm going to have him do the Call Lightning Staff as well, and Kinson will be using this Cultist Blade. Basically, uh, if he hits a person uh, that doesn't have any defense, he'll gain three willpower, which is like a lot of willpower for us to use, and um, it shows us here that these are the types of guys we're going to have to fight at the end. So let's start the game. Let me just take a look. The settlement of Terralin is dying. You must travel to an elven palace to locate the legendary water stone and save your people from the drought. So locate the water gem. Let's continue. Okay. So... Let's go to these ruins here. A small arched stone bridge with various stones missing, crossing a long since dried, dried up river. You notice that the keystone of the bridge's arch is made, made up of black volcanic stone. So let's see, we can examine the volcanic keystone. There, we will get a guaranteed uh, epic reward, but there's also a 50% chance of a battle. Or we can scour the riverbed. There will be a battle for sure and then guaranteed food. I kind of want the epic reward, so let's see what happens. Kayrid gives Kinson a leg up so he can reach it, and they manage to pull it down. The crashing sound has alerted several reptilian creatures who scurry along the stones of the riverbed. So here's our 50% fight. Two guys to fight. Uh, these are Basilis. Basilis. Uh, let's see, advance, unstable blast. Okay. Ooh, we don't want these though. Swipe, adaptable. Whenever a power is played on, you gain a willpower. Okay. Okay. Bloodletting. So nothing good right now. And if we put our cursor here, oh, we can see immediately what skills they're going to use on us. So this type of, this type of uh, enemy is going to... Has a lot of attack skills and a bit of blocking. So we got to be careful. Okay. So, uh, let us... Oh, I need to get... my. Let's move that guy a little closer. We'll get rid of the Unstable Blast. We will apply a Willpower to him. And a Adaptable to him. Okay, and I'm going to advance this way. 
we'll get rid of the melee and enemies turn they're gonna move closer melee resistance okay he's got defense up okay so our turn force missile call lightning perfect can trip every time you play a card that deals magic damage gain yeah we want that let's get rid of this we'll do can trip on me uh let's see feral lunge oh that's good okay roar deal three magic damage to all enemies if this card is in hand it gains plus two damage every time you exert i don't understand okay sneak sneak bloodletting okay that doesn't help us every time you perform a combo strike okay so let's use this okay and i need to use that four damage nice so we we did enough damage to remove his buff and let's see i want to force missile okay beautiful that guy's dead right right off the bat um sneak gain stealth and i'm going to punish Okay, get closer. Enemy turn. He's going to move closer. He's going to put on a buff as well. Okay. Instant. Move plus one. Okay. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to get rid of swipe. Force missile. What? Out of range. Wait, force missile. I need to be within three spaces. One, two, three. Okay. Here. Now you can hit him. Okay. There we go. Improvised attack. And improvised attack. Can't be recycled. Uh, I'll get rid of that. Hmm. Okay, let's wait a moment. Enemy turn, he's probably going to attack us now. Defend. Attack. Damn it. Okay, let's call, let's do Feral Lunge. You'll notice with the uh, Spirit Speaker, this guy right here, uh, he, has the, he has abilities where he can um, attack or do things without actually spending willpower. If you remember, that is the mana. That's kind of like the resource, um, but it, it, you, have to, you have to do what's called exert. So you have to remove a buff that you have on you to be able to use it. So we'll do that. There we go, five. Victory. Okay, so we leveled up. I will level up uh, our melee guy. Let's see, what are we gonna do? Hidden shot, meh. Nah. Melee attack, deals double damage if neither your target nor attacker are adjacent to any other characters. I don't feel like that even does very much damage. Whenever another friendly character gains stealth, gain plus two stealth. These are all horrible abilities. Uh, every time you perform a combo strike gain, no. I think I'm just going to upgrade Punish. And we got the Obsidian Coins. And then we got Wooden Club. That's eh, not useful. Ooh, we got Husk. So I'm going to give that to someone so that we can start summoning. Because this guy's special ability is... When he sum if 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 this if he summons the husk as his first thing, it'll have plus two health, which is good. Okay. So that's good. The keystone is far too large to bring up with you. To bring with you. But up close you find runes carved deep into the surface inlaid with intr intricate mithril designs. Oh, so we also got mithril dust. Too epic. Okay. 
Let's move this way. A plume of smoke alerts you to a burning caravan up ahead. Bodies of rattlings and humans litter the area. So we have the option to attempt to salvage something with a 100% chance to get a reward, but we also 75% chance for someone to take health damage. But uh, I do have Kinson, which, which is a character choice. Kinson's hardened skin will make weathering the flames easier. So we guarantee reward. Oh yeah. Kinson goes about gathering what she can. Okay. The flames lick her skin painfully, but cause no lasting damage. Okay. So we got sturdy bones, which is a crafting material. We got forged metal. We also got a robe. So uh, that's a better version. So let's give it to my elementalist. And uh, the robe gives us this thing. I think the same skill, right? It's just we got more armor. Okay, so the question is, do we want to head up north or down south? We'll head towards the, the quest area. Judging by the broken slate headstones scattered around, it looks like you're in the remains of a human graveyard. So we have the choice of start digging up the graves, where we can 50% chance of taking damage and a quarter chance of gaining both an epic reward and or a legendary reward. Or we just get a 100% chance of getting obsidian, which is money. I'm going to try to go for this. After a while, you hear the disconcerting sound of steel on bone. Pushing away earth from around the body using your bare hands, you discover a skeletal head dressed in an intricately designed helmet. Ooh, he must have been a man of great wealth as the helmet is made from an in incredibly hard metal. So it doesn't look like anyone took damage and we got an epic uh, helmet, which is beautiful. And uh, only one person can use it apparently, which is Kared. So let's see, plus three armor, which um, if you guys forget, this is about giving us temporary health in battle, which is always useful. Uh, let's see, there's no thought about it. The extra armor is fantastic. So we'll take that. Now we'll keep heading southeast. Let's head over here. Our guys are getting tired. There, our guys are getting tired now. Ooh, the undulating plains have become craggier with several low ridges ahead. Ascending the final ridge, you see a series of fiery fissures and craters spewing volcanic fire and sending burning black rocks into the air. So we're gonna go with uh, the, the one that guarantees us a reward due to our character. See if Preya can use her elemental powers to cool the rock. Peering down into one of the fissures, Kinson spots some skeletal remains on a shelf near the lava flow. Preya focuses her thoughts and draws the energy from a nearby fissure so that Kinson can approach safely. You examine the loot before moving on quick, quickly on. So we got a blue or a rare rested shield. Beautiful. And we got a crafting material, treated leather. We also got a, another of these uh, summoning things. So beautiful, okay. We'll give this summoning one to Preya. Remember, her special ability is the first card she plays each turn costs one mana less, so that'll make it easier to, to cast these guys. Uh, remember, the casting cost is on the top right of the card. So as you can see, the Husk costs two mana, the Mad Soul costs three, so it'll cost one and two respectively. Uh, let's give this shield to someone. Um, let's, let's spread out the armor. There we go, beautiful. Now the question is, where are we gonna go next? I think I'm gonna head, see there's a roaming monster. I'd rather go here. We should rest very soon though. You enter the remains of a human settlement that has been taken over by rattlings. A few guards are blocking the path ahead and spot you and demand a toll to enter. Ah, <sighs> let's see. I don't really want to engage while we're, while we're tired. So we're gonna tell them you wish to sell items at the market. The rattling leader tells you that they will grant you entry if you pay your seller's tax in advance to them. It's 10 obsidian for each of you. Uh, we have the money, I'll do it. Okay, so we're gonna sell the cloth rags and the wooden club, and we're gonna buy food. We can't really afford anything else. Uh, food is used, if you forget, to, to camp. 
and there's a lot of camping in this game. So we're also going to spend our time, whenever you camp, you get to, you, if you have the resources, you can upgrade items, you can hone items. Um, upgrading items means that you upgrade the cards associated with your equipment, while honing items means that you remove one of the skills associated with the item, so that if you don't like all the skills associated with your equipment, you can make your deck more uh, efficient. So we are going to upgrade the purple, the purple uh, helmet. Whenever you gain defense, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's see. We're halfway at that. Let's move forward. A band of hybrid have laid claim to these ruins and refuse you access. They offer to refill your water skins if you, you will leave immediately. I'll do that because I want more food. Nice. The hybrid bring forth a large skinned animal that seems to, to, to acting as a water trough. So more food, always need more food. Question is, do we want to take shelter? I think we'll take shelter again, fight these guys, and then go, go through those two places. So let's see, what, what can we upgrade? We can upgrade the robe or the cultist blade. Three damage, I'll take it. Okay, let's back up. Let's fight these guys. The group of rattlings, bounty hunters it seems, realize that you're not the group that they have been sent to capture. Their leader presses you for information about a group of human criminals, but does not press the issue when you claim ignorance. Ah, uh, let's fight them. Uh oh, three enemies, not good. Notice we have more health because, because due to the, all the extra armor. So let's see, cantrips, nope. Whenever you gain defense this turn, gain the same amount again. Draw two cards, oh that's not too bad. Swipe, oh we got some bad cards at the beginning. Hmm. So these are ranged guys, rattling bowmen, oh they're all rat. So we want to get out of the way. There we go. Um, we'll hold on to that. I'll use that and draw two cards. We'll use Iron Skin. And, um, every time you perform a combo, gain willpower. Okay. Let's see. Do that. Okay, we'll wait. They're all going to focus fire on this guy, most likely. Okay, they're buffed. He's going to come closer and shoot my guy. Ow. Ow. Okay, let's see. So I can summon a guy. Let's get closer. Get closer. We're going to use this a bloodletting ability. This will do three damage, and we're going to gain three willpower because this guy has no defense, and that'll give us time to make to summon the husk, which I kind of want closer. Is there any way that I can get closer? Husk. There we go. There we go. And now we're going to attack this guy, causing a combo. So one guy's down. Uh, let's see. We're going to get closer. We're going to summon a husk next to this guy. Get rid of this. Force missile. Don't have enough mana. Let's see. Magic attack. I don't think this can hit anyone, though. What a waste. Uh, let's see if I can get out of range. Okay. Let's see what the enemy is going to do. They're going to move. Don't shoot me. Who's he going to shoot? That guy. Damn it. Ow. Okay. So let's move our guys closer. I'm going to move this husk to attack and it'll, it'll cause a, a combo. There we go. Beautiful. That guy's basically dead. 
Uh, I don't think I need this anymore. Lightning, that guy's down. After you play a melee, after you play a move card, deal four melee damage to all adjacent enemies. Oh. Okay. We'll force missile this this guy, and we will do this. And we don't need that. Nice. That guy's dead. Victory. Battle reward. Let's upgrade our or level up our elementalist. So we got some cool, cool spells. Ice lance, which is a line attack. I t uh, yeah. intensify. Increase the duration of all named effects. Charged weapon. Melee attack two and inflict shock on all enemies within two spaces of the target. Interesting. After you play a card that deals magic damage, all future attacks deal. Hmm. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I can use instead, though? Every time you play a card that deals magic damage, gain one willpower. Okay, I'll do that. I'll upgrade that card. We got some obsidian coins, and we got some forged metal. Take that. And remember, triple question marks means that this is a, um, what's it called? A landmark, something, a, a special location. The area around is dotted with small patches of water, the remnants of Pirin's Lake. A nest of ballast, uh, basilisks near the water's edge indicate that there could be drinkable water here. So we can clear out the basilisk nest and look for the water source, which is a guaranteed battle, guaranteed food, or just leave the area. Let's fight them. So one basilisk and oh basilisk bitter. So uh, acid on enemies does not lose duration at the end of oh. So this kind of like uh, cause permanent buff or debuff or dot. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Force missile. I need to get this guy out of out of that area. Okay. Let's see. Let's summon a guy. There we go. Move a guy closer. There we go. We can't shoot anyone, right? No. Okay, we'll wait. Let's see what the enemies do. And defend. Yep, he's gonna shoot someone. Don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Okay, that's fine. Uh-oh. Great, okay. So, mad souls are actually ranged, guys. Oh, we can summon a husk. Ooh, but that's better. Let's move right here. And let's use unstable blast. Beautiful. And let's use... Beautiful. Get rid of sneak. I want to get closer. There we go. And let's uh, use that. We're going to use bloodletting on this guy to get three willpower. Great. We're going to summon another husk right here. And then we're going to use an improvised attack to trigger a combo attack on everyone. Oh, almost dead in one shot. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see what happens now. Defending. Okay. Iron skin. Bash. He's going to hit my... Okay, we're okay. Time to shoot. So these guys will sh Oh no. Oh, that's weird.
Okay. Get rid of this. We're going to use a bash attack. Get rid of that. We're going to now do... Nope. Hold on a second. Let's move my guy a little closer so that we can have more, more combo attacks. Everyone's going to combo on this guy. Okay, we just need one more person to attack. There we go. Victory. Should Someone else should level up. The water in the lake here appears to be drinkable. This seems to have attracted another, uh, other humanoids, and their remains can be found in the basilisk's nest. So we're going to level up our spirit speaker. All friendly summons gain plus, two at plus one attack damage for every other summon, which is great or all melee attacks deal plus two damage. Stampede, activate all friendly characters, that's not bad. Or magic attack on all enemies in the target area. If this area, or if this attack deals damage, the next time you exert this turn does not discard a power, that's pretty cool. I think we're gonna use swarm aspect and replace our swipe attack. Okay, so we got treated leather, we got some food, we got some crafting materials, more crafting materials, more crafting materials, and obsidian coins. Okay, so we're going to avoid these guys here. We're going to go to this place right here. You hear the clanking noise of a hammer striking stone and the sound of sawing wood. It becomes clear that a family of human men and women are reconstructing a house destroyed in an aurora storm. So we have a 33% chance to lose money but gain food and a reward. I don't like losing food. Or, actually I don't mind losing obsidian and gaining food. Let's try it. After construction, the family offers you a celebratory drink and toast your health, but something feels horribly wrong as a liquid touches your throat. The next thing you know, you wake up on a cart in the middle of nowhere under the midday sun. Oh. Uh, we are going to rest. We're going to upgrade something just for fun. Okay, there we go. We have full experience. Let's see. Up ahead, you spot a strange looking geyser, periodically shooting a jet of green liquid into the air. The liquid falls down a deep hill before landing with a violent hiss at the bottom of this strange well. So we guaranteed reward or six, and a 66% chance of taking health damage or we avoid it. I think our guys are okay, let's, let's go for it. Kred uses a glass container to try to catch some of the acidic liquid the next time it shoots from the geyser. Unfortunately, a small amount of the liquid splashes out and onto his forearm in the process, causing painful burns, even through clothing. Oh, we took three damage. You managed to collect a considerable amount of the acid in a glass container. So we got a new equipment item. It's a ranged attack and inflicts acid, which is kind of like a dot. So we'll take it, but not really worth it. Okay, so uh, let's go over here. Preya comes across an abandoned backpack nestled between some rocks. As she picks up the pack to investigate, a human approaches claiming he looted the backpack and offers two spare water skins in exchange. So do we keep the reward or do we get food? I always want food. So we're gonna hand over the materials in exchange for the water skins. Give me two food though, only one food. You exchange the dusky dusty backpack for the man's spare water skins. Okay. And nowhere to rest. We're going to get tired soon. Yep, we're tired now. We could rest out in the open, but I don't like doing that. Because you don't gain back as much um, uh, fatigue. You can just about make out a young female hybrid with her arms and head chained to the remains of a sturdy building. She's surrounded by a mob of ratlings who are throwing clumps of something foul smelling at her. So we can try to help the prisoner by running back into the square, warning the villagers of an impending attack by a dragon, so I, I guess pretending. 
or we can attempt to sneakily steal some of the obsidian from the couple of members of the crowd, or we could just ignore the scene and see what you can find in the traitor. Um, let's go for the. F it doesn't say that there's a chance to fight, so let's let's try to try to help the prisoner with a 50% chance to get a new follower and a 50% to shop. We don't really have that much money. We only have eight bucks, anyways. You're not entirely sure if this risky plan will work, but you act it out as with as much gusto as you can muster. However, when you return to the square, the crowd has begun to disperse, and the lifeless body of the hybrid hangs limply against the deserted building. You find a rattling trader who's willing to barter with you. Okay, so we don't have any money. We'll sell that acid uh, potion, and we can't buy anything anyway. So we could sell some of our crafting materials, and I think I might do that. I'll sell the treat one treated leather so that we can get more food. Okay. And you know what? I think I'm going to end the video right here. Thank you very much for joining me today. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on Trials of Fire, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.